everybody it's Karen here I'm coming to you from my scrap room on a snowy day here in Massachusetts I wanted to um, share with you today the process video for my sweet safari scrapbooking workshop you'll be able to make five two-page layouts with this workshop using the sweet safari paper pack coordinating cardstock and PML cards for picture my life cards and some embellishments I've added a few other little things to this workshop as well as kind of optional pieces, but I'm really excited for this. I hope you love the layouts as much as I did creating them. And so I'm going to walk you through assembling each of the pages. I've already pre-cut my pieces. You'll have all of the information to pre-cut your cardstock and your papers in the cutting guide that comes with the workshop digital files. So let's get started. First layout I am going to do is going to be this layout which is the explore layout so i'm just going to move aside all of my pieces one of the little things i decided to do on this to just jazz it up a little bit is to add some sponged details with a stencil on my background piece so to do that what i'm going to do is i am going to place my avocado cardstock on my base page, which is my lagoon paper, and I'm gonna do a tone on tone sponging. This is about an inch and a quarter inch and a half up from the bottom of the page. And I am going to be using this stencil. This is part of a stencil that's in our stencil pack. The stencil comes in a full sheet like this, and it has nine different designs with it. And I found it easier to work with by cutting it up into nine individual designs that's just a little thing that i learned i'm going to use my, my small dots for this so placing this here temporarily i'm going to grab my pencil and i am going to play around with where i want to do my sponging so one thing i need to do is i'm going to mark my page where i want where my base where my background is so that I can put it back but also so that I know where to put my template. I'm just going to mark a little bit there. So I'm going to move, a car, uh, move off my cardstock and then I'm going to take my template, line it up here, and then I'm going to grab my washi tape. I keep a small roll of washi tape on my desk at all times. Just makes it easier to um, hold the template down so that uh, it doesn't move while you're sponging. So I'm just gonna put it, put a little bit of washi tape on two parts of it. I'm using Lagoon Exclusive Inks and I have a sponge. So the sponges come, of course, in a circle. I cut mine into quarters so that I get more usage out of them. And then I have a little kind of tag punch that I use. I write the name of the color on the tag punch and staple it to my piece of sponge. That way I have a big drawer that has all of these different colors. I probably should organize it one of these days. I haven't done that yet. That's on the list. So I'm just gonna take my Lagoon ink and now I'm gonna kind of swirl around. Um, this is just to kind of give it a little bit of a difference kind of a tone on tone difference to it. It's not gonna be super dark, but I kind of like the look of it. I just wanted to do something fun with this layout. You can dab it, roll it, whatever works best for you. And this is something you could also do with texture paste. But, so there's, that's one piece. I'm just gonna carefully remove my and it's very, very light, very subtle, but you can see I've just done a little bit of tone on tone stamping and I'm gonna erase those lines once the ink dries and I'm gonna move on to this page and I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's see, I'm gonna move this this way. So I'm gonna do the same process. I'm just gonna take my sponge And the more ink you get on the sponge, the darker you go when you're transferring the ink to your stencil and your paper. 
and you don't have to fill in every circle on the dot on this <laughs> just if you have some that are half filled in it just makes it a nicer look so there's that I'll move that aside take that off and again just a little bit of texture to my background with just a simple stencil and some ink and just a tone on tone you know just add something a little bit different to the background and being that this is our um dye ink it's going to dry pretty fast so i'm just going to go in I'm going to erase my pencil lines and then I'm going to start assembling my page. So I'm going to walk you through each of the pages on this. I'm not going to adhere everything down, but I do want you to see how it comes together. First pieces I'm going to do is I have these three long strips that I have dovetailed and I'm going to just get my adhesive. Now, sometimes a little trick that I do often with um, dovetails is I will put a little bit of foam tape underneath the bottom. That's why I didn't put any adhesive under there because I'm gonna probably, um, as a last step, I'm gonna add a little bit of foam, tap, foam tape just under the bottom corners of it. So, adhere that, then this strip. Overlay that. Then I'm going to take, I have two pieces that are eight inches tall. Sorry, nine inches tall. I have one that's six. That's right, yeah, six. One that's nine. And so they are going to go just on the back there. Once you do, you know, once you get your pieces cut, these pages come together very quickly which I love. Simple cuts, nothing too fancy. I do have some Cricut cuts for the title and for I have a circle element. I do include the link to the Cr Cricut cut file in my cutting guide but you don't have to have a Cricut to use this which is nice because you can achieve the same effect with um, just cutting your own circle with a circle cutter that you have or um, even your own fonts that you may use. So you don't have to have a Cricut in order to do this workshop. This is just a zip strip. I'm gonna just add this. The top. This overhangs a bit. And just a couple more banners, banner pieces. Up in this corner. And then my photos. Uh, five by seven. Then I'm going to use three by fours. You could use other shaped photos if you want on this. This is what I'm doing. And then I have got some journaling strips to put on this page. And then my explore titles. Now this was cut on the Cricut. This is one of the titles that's available in the file I created. I have it cuts twice, once with black cardstock, once with white. And this is something I do with a font that does not have a shadow as part of the font set. So what I do is I just cut it the same size twice and then offset it when I adhere it. So I am just going to adhere that there. I'll adhere it later on with a little bit of foam tape. I'm using some of the wooden arrows set. And that is the first layout from the Sweet Safari scrapbooking workshop. Let's put this aside and we'll move on to layout number two. This one is the adventure layout. So just getting pieces up, some stuff stuck to the bottom, get that out of the way. This one is gonna be fairly straightforward. Moving the pieces off. What we're gonna do with this though is 
first piece is we're going to adhere our zip strips along the top edge of the paper. I am, anybody that knows me and has scrapbooked with me knows that I am a zip strip lover. I use them quite a lot, many different opportunities. Whenever I can, I incorporate zip strips into my layouts. This down. And what I'm going to do here for these pieces is I am going to corner around the outer edges. So they're going to meet in the center of the page. So I'm just going to corner around On the left page is going to be the left edges, and on the right page, the right edges. Just to well, change it up a little bit, instead of straight, plain strips. Now these pieces, like I said, are all pre-cut. I did done this ahead of time to prep for doing this video, so, but this is something that, you know, the cutting guide will walk you through. And I give specific directions on cutting to maximize using your papers. I was able to get these five layouts with not a ton of scrap left over from the paper pack. And you can have the option, this workshop calls for using the paper pack without the sticker sheet, but if you wanted to, you could purchase the paper pack with the sticker sheet just as a way of maybe doing different titles than I have done. So what I'm going to do, here my This is about an inch up from the bottom of the page. When I have things that go across two pages, I like to do the two pages at the same time pretty much just makes it easier because I can line them up and use one page to adhere the next page's piece. And the red dots go next. And this is about an inch maybe a little bit more down from your zip strip. And then lastly is going to be my... I decided to make this workshop more of... Um, a non baby workshop. Everything is pretty could be used because I love the bright vibrant colors in this paper pack but I don't really do a lot of baby scrapbooking because my kids are of course are in their 20s so I'm kind of out of that so I wanted to do something that would be a little bit more generic that would work well for just kind of our hikes and our things that we do as a family so there's that, and then I've got my four, four by six photos. And again, you can swap out your photos for whatever works best for you. And I'm gonna do some more. I like doing journal strips. If you don't like doing journal strips, you could write your, do your handwriting right on the page, or you could easily just do a journal box. I using the PML, the PML card, the Picture My Life cards a little bit in this, but this is a place where you could add, add a Picture My Life card here on the right-hand side as a journal box, or on even on the left-hand side, you can definitely incorporate those however you want. But, uh, so there's my adventure title. Oops. And then just a couple pieces from the wood uh, arrow set. There's the adventure layout, so layout number two. Moving right along to layout number three. This is gonna be the Let's Play layout. I've been working with this one because I wanted to do something with 
um, the cir a circle because I saw the clouds, love the clouds paper, and I wanted to somehow incorporate it in my layouts, and I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. So what I decided to do is on each page, I've cut, oh, for, the, for each of the pages, I cut a 10 and a half inch diameter circle on my Cricut and then just cut it in half. So this is going to be base for both pages, top and bottom. And again, I'm gonna do a little bit of sponging here to give something to the background. So I'm gonna do what I did before, is I'm going to mark where my circle will go, a little bit of the side. And I'm gonna do, I'm very much one for symmetry. So if you can't tell, I'm gonna just mark that. And this time I'm using this diamond patterned one, but I am gonna turn it to make it into squares. So I'm just gonna have this coming down from the top corner and then up from the bottom corner. And I'm gonna use Bluebird ink on this to give a tone on tone again. I'm using my washi tape to adhere this to my page. And again, I have a sponge already for the Bluebird ink. And I'm gonna to try to go a little darker on this. So this is just a little technique I like to do just to give sometimes, instead of just a plain background, because I'm not really one who's much for using pattern paper for backgrounds but I do like having sometimes some definition to my background. There is my, oops, left-hand page. So you can kind of see that coming down from the top corner. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process on the bottom corner here. And put the same direction. I love these sponges, they work so well and they hold the ink really well. You could use a dauber for this if you didn't happen to have sponges. That's another option. On that side, pull the template off. So there's that and I'm gonna go in and erase my lines. And then I'm going to start assembling this page. So first, of course, is going to be my circles. I mean, you could change this around and not and use this, this animal's paper instead. That's completely up to you. Put this down. But it's, I just, for me, for my family, with not having little kids anymore, which of course kills me when we have these beautiful paper packs that have so much great papers for those with little little kids. It makes me jealous. And then I just have my strips. So what I've got to, on this is I've got some of the espresso scallop paper and my my leaves paper and then I'm going to put my photos below that and then another border of the leaves and my espresso scallop paper again and then I'm going to repeat that on this side and they're not going to line up across the page because of the way I created this which is fine I did this to just for a little bit of difference and then my other two four by six photos. Oops, oh, I have one extra in my pile. That there. And that. And then I have my lettering, which I just 
did individual ones this time so that I could kind of play around with how I wanted them to be on the page when I adhere it. But uh, I thought this was kind of fun. Let's play. Because it works well with this kind of paper, pattern paper. Outside, maybe a good park one. Be a good one for being outside, doing something. Yeah, sticking to my fingers. And like, like I said, all of these titles come in the Cricut file that I have listed in the um, cut the cutting directions guide. And again, I did some small journaling strips for this layout. And we can, uh, you know, there's enough of the white left over after you cut out the parts of the titles on the Cricut, so you can do as many journaling strips as you want. And then a few more added a couple other arrows and that is the let's play layout so i'm just going to take this and move this aside i'm not completely adhering everything because i'm sure you guys could get a little bit bored with listening to me talk or hopefully not but we'll see so this is going to be happy is and this is definitely a happy layout this one i had fun designing. It's just kind of very basic, nothing super fancy with it, but definitely enjoyed it. So what I have is I've got three strips for my left-hand page, and I'm going to just kind of angle them and put them at various widths. And then I've, gonna, I've got my photo mats for my two four by six photos. And you can play around with how you like these. You could even put these strips horizontally as opposed to vertically if you wanted. Move that picture up a little bit. And then on my right hand page, I have a photo block surrounded by zip strips. And this one has four three by four photos. I've got a couple a few banners that I'm actually gonna put coming up from my photo block as opposed to coming down from the corner just for something different. And then this time I'm using a, one of the Picture My Life cards for a journaling block. You could just do a straight white, but I just decided to do this. And then my title, Happy, is... And that is layout four. Hope you guys are following along with me right now trying to keep this to under 30 minutes if, if I'm I'm sorry if I'm getting this to be longer but I five layouts definitely takes a little while <laughs> my last layout is laughter and I thought this was a fun one to do and I'm gonna do some, an, another little bit of a technique to add to the background because I'm using white daisy cardstock for this so I'm gonna just I've got my photos this one and this is a great way a great technique for using up a lot of your scraps. So this was basically what I had a whole bunch of scraps from the paper pack. Like, how can I use this? What can I do with this to make it fun? Well, I decided to just cut a bunch of strips and squares and that is what I'm going to build my, my page on. So, but what I'm gonna do first is I am going to place my strips and squares and I'm going to do this time I'm going to do a little bit of a splattering technique with some of the inks so I'm going to just kind of place these rough approximation 
of where I am going to have them because they're going to be hidden underneath that. So I'm going to just do it so because I don't want to splatter and then have everything disappear behind my pieces of paper. That wouldn't be fun at all. So that's my right hand page. And I'm sorry, left hand page. And then on the right hand page, I am going to do this on this side here coming out. See that, like I said, this is a great technique for using up little scraps you have of your papers. So move this aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking my, I'm going to use both my blue, my Bluebird and my Laguna inks. And old habit is you just kind of squeeze the ink. And what that does is it's going to deposit the ink on your lid. And I'm using a water brush. So I'm just going to get a little bit of water out into the lid. Try to get it wet. And then I am going to move everything else out of the way so I don't make a mess. Hold it above my paper where I want it to go. And I'm going to hit it. Hit the barrel. Do a little bit on the bottom too. So if you have to be careful how wet it is because you'll get those kind of little bit more wet dots. But I'm going to do that there. Same thing on this page. That's one ink color. Oh, I meant to grab a paper towel ahead of time. Forgot to get, so I just have to clean that off. Because now I'm going to do the same thing, but with the Laguna ink. Lagoon. Laguna. <laughs> I don't know why I have Laguna stuck in my head. Same thing. You squeeze it together to get some of the ink on the top lid. Use the water from your water brush. Actually try to get some excess off. It's just This is a great way to kind of create your own backgrounds. So that is kind of just splattering the background. So building the page is fairly simple. Just gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure it dries, but just to show you is I'm gonna take my papers and I'm gonna kind of start to play with placement where I like it. And then I'm using my espresso cardstock as my mat. And I'm putting two four by six photos on here. And then on this page, same thing. My espresso cardstock is my mat. And I'm gonna play with my placement of my little strips here and squares, tuck them behind my, angle them whatever works best for you. I'm using a picture of my life card as the base for my journaling block. And then what I'm going to do is I've got three by four photos that are going to go right here. And you could put more. You could fit four photos in this. I'm just doing three for now. And then my title. You could put the title anywhere. You could put it here. You could put it here. I think I'm going to put mine down here. And then I have a few more of my wooden elements from my wood stars set and this time i had to have a piece of paper that will fit as my journaling block and that is the final layout from my sweet safari scrapbooking workshop i want to thank you for joining me i hope you like these layouts if you are um, interested in purchasing it this will be up on my shop available for purchase and if you're one of my vips you know the perk of being one of my vips is that you get free access to all of my workshop kits thank you for watching and i really appreciate it have a wonderful day